So the basics of a sample and hold circuit um, start with the following. Um, a capacitor. Basically, the capacitor stores charge and whatever you apply to it in voltage is going to be charging it instantly to that voltage and that's what it's going to say. Um, that's what you can measure off of it. And, you know, other than a little bit of leakage from the capacitors, uh, it's not going to um, come out very much. So right now I have this little experiment set up where I have five volts going into the switch on the left here and um, going to a capacitor, the positive side of this electrolytic capacitor. And the other side is connected to ground, uh, but this other switch here allows for a 100k uh, resistor to discharge that capacitor if I press it. So if I press this button, five volts, just like that. You see it drifting down a little bit, but there's now no VCC being supplied because to, to this capacitor, it's just staying at this level. Now, if I press this other button right here, it's gonna discharge according to the resistance. Boom. And now if I stop pressing it, now it's at about two and a half volts, 2.38. And you can keep pressing it to discharge it, and it just stays there. And if I press the left button again, it charges again instantly to five volts keep pressing it, it just stays at five volts. It drifts down because of leakage from, you know, some, uh, all capacitors leak a little bit, but now if I'm gonna discharge it, it goes down. So that is how a capacitor works, and that's how a capacitor um, holds voltage. So when you activate this switch and connect the positive side of the capacitor to whatever voltage you're putting in, it samples it for as long as I hold the button down. I'm, gonna, I'm not touching the button now, but if I press the button now, it's gonna sample whatever voltage, in this case it's five uh, volts of uh, uh, VCC instantly. And it won't really discharge. I could power off this whole circuit, press the power off, and it's still up there. And when I power it back on, it's not going to change. I just added a little VCC to the circuit, but for the most part, it didn't change. It's drifted down a little bit, but not much. And the only way to drift it down is to do this. Let me zoom out a little bit. And power up, drift down. So now, if I disconnect this, disconnect the BCC, and let's see if I can do that easily, and I connect this wire right here, this wire is coming from a triangle wave generator. So the triangle wave generator, I'm gonna put it on channel two here, um, is from my oscillator circuit here. I have a CD40106 making a triangle wave. So let's turn it on. There's our slow LFO triangle wave. Let me discharge the capacitor all the way with that button. So now, when I press the left button, which charges the capacitor, whatever voltage that triangle wave is at at the time is going to be the voltage that's sampled and held at that point. And if I press it again at a higher point, it's going to be at that voltage. If I press it at a lower point, that's that voltage. And so basically every time this button is pressed, this trigger button is pressed, it 
samples at that voltage. Now, what's interesting is, if I press and hold the button down, it keeps sampling, it follows the curve. And the minute I let it go, it stays at that level. So, the capacitor is at the core of any sample and hold circuit. So now, let's say I'm gonna press the button multiple times. And I'm gonna keep pressing it and you get this kind of pattern. And that's what sample and hold does. Now, if I do it slow, slower, you get a slower approximation. But you sort of see the picture of the waveform appearing on the yellow curve. It's just slower. And if I decrease the sampling rate too, that is not a good approximation. Hence, this is the background behind the Nyquist theorem and having to sample at double the frequency to get a decent approximation. So that is the basics of a sample and hold circuit. Now, we're gonna find a way using a MOSFET to do this in an automated fashion. So based on the previous experiment, the sampling time is when the switch is opened or the button is pushed or when a trigger comes in. The hold time is when that goes to zero. So we're gonna use a MOSFET for this. So working backwards through the circuit, we have the capacitor that holds the voltage. I'm gonna use a one microfarad capacitor here and the output of that gets buffered before it gets put out to the output. So at the center of this is a MOSFET, which functions like a switch or the momentary button that I pushed on the experiment. Basically, the input signal to be sampled is first buffered and then goes put into the drain of the MOSFET. The output goes to the capacitor and the gate is controlled by the triggering signal, which I will discuss in the next slide. So as an example, I'm using in my circuit a triangle wave oscillator based off of a CD4106 uh, hex inverting Schmidt trigger circuit. Now for the gate, I'm gonna use another Schmidt trigger inverter based off the CD4106, this time configured as a square wave generator with a variable frequency that could be varied with the 100K pot. With this, the frequency can vary between three hertz and several hundred kilohertz. So quick note about sampling rate. Uh, as you saw in the beginning of the video, the slower the sample rate, as can be seen on the left side of the screen here, you get a poor approximation of the actual input waveform that you're sampling. However, as you sample at a higher rate, a la the Nyquist theorem, you get a better approximation, you get a better uh, approximation of the sampled waveform, as can be seen in the middle panel on the right. So the problem with the CD4106 oscillator is that the output of this gives you a 50% duty cycle square wave waveform. And as you can see on the graph on the left, the longer the sampling time, you actually run with the curve and there's no actual hold time and so you want to minimize the sampling time to hold time ratio so in order to do this i'm going to use a circuit that i used when i was building the drum machine and basically all you have to do is take the output of the schmidt trigger inverter the oscillator and put it through a gate to trigger converter which you can see in this um, schematic right here this is going through a comparator and the output of that comparator is giving you very short pulses that go to the gate of the MOSFET. So with this, the output of the comparator provides this short pulse which gates the signal and allows a very quick sample time and a longer hold time. So let's see how this works on the breadboard. 
So now I set it up that this triangle uh, wave generator, which is generated by the CD40106 chip, is uh, has its output going through this buffer of a TLO74 op amp buffer. And then the output of that um, is going to the input of this MOSFET, the IRFZ44N. So the input of that MOSFET is um, the yellow wire there. Um, from a separate oscillator, I have a square wave oscillator that's going really fast, but it's, it's controlled by an adjustable rate with the potentiometer here. And that goes to a gate to trigger converter through that small um, 10 nanofarad capacitor or 47K resistor to ground. And then through a diode to get rid of the negative voltages. And then um, it gets put through a comparator so it can give you very short uh, pulses. And that goes to the gate of this MOSFET. The output of the MOSFET goes to this one uh, nanofarad or one microfarad capacitor, and that is holding whatever voltage is sampled from the input wave at the drain. Um, and so the output of that is going through another buffer on the TLO74, and that um, is being read by the oscilloscope. So I have on the oscilloscope here, the original triangle wave generated by the CD40106 oscillator. And in the, the yellow curve, the, the yellow wave is the sample and hold generated from that. Now, the sample and hold, if I adjust this potentiometer, this will increase or decrease the rate at which we sample. So let me decrease the rate right now to a very a slower rate. Um, and so here's the sampling at a very slow rate. Gives you not as great an approximation of the waveform, but that is sampling and holding. Um, even slower still. Now, I'm going to turn up this potentiometer, increase the rate, and you can watch it increase, and you get a very good approximation of the waveform because you take more samples along the waveform. And that's a pretty darn good approximation, much higher resolution, and that's sampling and holding at each step, at each little stair on that staircase that you see is the capacitor being charged and the signal being sent out and buffered at that point along the parent wave, the blue wave. So that, I just have it set to different scales in order to be able to show the two curves at the same time. But if I was to adjust the two curves to be on the same scale, by changing this button, you see how well each of these is approximated. By that capacitor. And let me slow it down now. Slow down the uh, sampling rate. To a little more reasonable level. sample and hold and this is the first step of any analog to digital converter but I'm going to be using it for audio not analog to digital conversion here's the complete schematic of my sample and hold circuit as I said in the next video I'm going to be experimenting with this in audio applications